Well, tonight we're going to do a little work with the boy. Um, I think it's time to start teaching him a little bit about timber layout, some things to look for. Not going to be any cutting tonight, but I kind of want to start teaching the kids some basic carpentry things. Now, granted, this is probably a little bit over the basic mark, but I want to start getting them learning the basic rules of thumb, things like that. You know, kids, you kind of got to throw it at them slow. He's 10 years old now. He's at a good age to start picking this up. As a rule, I do not put the kids out there much because there's a lot of whack jobs out there in this world. But once in a while, I'll throw them in. And I'll do so once in a while as long as things stay respectful. You know, I've, I've got a rule the kids are, they don't, aren't to be posted on Facebook or any of that stuff. Because uh, Facebook's a little more personal as to where you live and things like that. And I'm just one of those overprotective, paranoid fathers. But anyway, I like getting the kids out here to work with me on this any chance I can. And he's getting to an age now where he's starting to show a lot of interest in what I'm doing, trying to learn it. Um, the girl there, the master disaster, not the two-year-old, but our nine-year-old, she, uh, she's not quite there focus-wise yet to start teaching this stuff too much. I mean, I teach her a little bit when I can, but she doesn't always really kind of her mind's in a thousand other directions you know if a squirrel hops by it's over so but the boy he's he's one of these old soul kids you know what i mean he's uh he acts a lot older than he is he retains stuff really well and it's kind of a fun age because he hasn't he hasn't discovered that teenage social life yet that i'm just gonna dread running into when it does come here because the way i figured i only have a few more years with him to where I can really be with them, that father-son relationship, and that's really important to me. And I'm one of these fathers. I'm very guilty of putting work before everything else a lot of times, and I'm trying to get out of that mode. That's one reason, another reason we've been slow on uploads. I've been spending a lot more time with the kids because I, I'm noticing, you know, you snap your fingers, blink your eyes, and all of a sudden they're, they're 10 years old. and you think to yourself it's not going to be too long they're going to be adults and out of the house so I, i'm trying to do a little bit more with them that way and it's also important to me that my kids have some trade skills when they go out and meet the world so something breaks in their house or something like that they're not shelling out hundreds of dollars to get somebody to fix it or making my phone ring every time i turn around for dad to come and fix it so you got to start teaching them these skills now. That's that's so important to me. And but uh, anyway, we're going to continue on. I'm going to get him out here. He asked to come out tonight, so I figured it would be a really good night just to show him a little layout. And here we go. I'll catch you on the other side of it. 
All right, so you know what I'm going to have you do? Huh. I'm going to teach you how to, how to lay a timber out. You want to learn about that? Sure. All right, any idea what we got to do to do this? No clue. No clue, okay. Now we got to see what side's the most square. So we got to check all four sides. You know how we check for square? Show me. Like that. Well, try setting it up here. Well, then grab it by the top. And just slide it in. Now, do you know what you're looking for? Make sure there's no light. Very good. I don't know. Okay, so that's good. So. So we know this side's good and square, right? No, I'm saying we can't use it. Well, how do you know? Why? There's light being through. Does it look the same all the way across? If I move, how's it look? Okay, so that's a good square side. We know that's good. So I'm just going to... I want you to put a little... Just a little triangle here and a little triangle there. Here? Yep. It goes. You gotta make it so we can see it. There you go. It's not as good as this side, though, is it? I couldn't really see. Couldn't really see. Let's try it again. Yeah, this side's better. That's off by like a sixteenth of an inch. So, these two sides look pretty good, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. So, we have to make some decisions here, don't we? Mm -hmm. Do you know what we're trying to find out right now? Uh, no, not really. Not really? Okay, so when you're doing a timber frame, and you want to lay out the timbers, why don't you step aside so I can turn this? You're looking for your best sides on the timber. Okay. You know what side to lay it out from, right? Mm -hmm. So we want the best possible square size. So. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's check this one. You tell me what looks good. Sure, you don't want your square tipped like that because then it's not going to give you a good reading. Top side, that side's good. Okay, and we know, we know this side's good. That one's off. Wait, no, it's not. No. Okay, mm -hmm. so I want you to check this. Go down, check it every few feet on both sides. All right. And I want you to tell me what side's the best. Okay. What side is the most square? And I'll explain to you why in a minute. So, which side did you think was the best? Uh, this side. You think this side's the best or this yeah. side? This side. You sure? <coughs> okay, let me double check you. I trust you, but let's see. I think you're right, buddy. Okay. All right, so we've seen a couple spots. You notice if you uh, go near the knots, it's got a little bit of a crown. You know what a crown is? Kind of a wobble? Yeah, something like that. It's like a curve. It's a very, very, this is a very, very slight curve. It's not enough to really affect us. There's not a ton of joints that go into this, and we may miss this altogether. 
All right. Any idea? I think you see right there where mm -hmm. that knot is? Uh -huh. We got a little bit of a, a wave there. And if we go here, you see that? Mm -hmm. That's not quite perfect. So this is what happens when you have rough cut timbers. So any idea how we, I mean, we got to measure this thing. It's got to all fit up. And we got to make it so it fits up like a puzzle, right? Mm -hmm. you know, like the rest of this did here? Yeah. Okay. So do you know what we're doing to try to make up for stuff like that? Uh, no. Okay. We're picking the best side on this so that we can take all our measurements from the best two sides. And that way it takes care of stuff like that so when we go to put this all together, it all matches up with the pieces before it. Does that make any sense to you? Mm -hmm. So say we get this bottom side isn't very good. Mm -hmm. It's not real bad, but it's not as good as I want it to be. So if I just go and lay everything out from that side, it's going to throw the joints off. They're going to be out of square and they're not going to fit. They call it square rule timber framing. That makes sense to you? Yeah. So you're picking your best sides to do your layout from, right? Yeah. Okay. Any idea why this right here? Any idea what happened there with that? I mean, that should be flat. You go to an area where there's no knots. It's perfect, right? Yeah. So what happens around these knots? It out a little. Well, how did it happen? I mean, when when did that happen? When did that get like that? When the, when the branches were growing. No, I mean, how did that? Why is it? Why is there a little bow in there? Why is there a little? Why is there a little valley in that? I guess the best way to put it. Mm -hmm. Come on. Speak up. Beats me. B2. Yep. What about these dark marks right here? What do you think that's from? The mill? Yeah, it's from the mill. You know what this probably means right here? Mm. It's probably milling with a blade that was probably getting towards the end of it. Yeah. Get, starting to get a little dull. Yeah. And when your blades start to get a little dull, you'll notice when you get the knots, kind of the blade kind of does what it wants to do. It dives in or it scoops over them because the knots are a lot denser and a lot harder than the wood around them. That makes sense? Yeah. Okay. So now that we've decided which faces are best, we got some decisions to make, right? Yeah. So we're going to do our reference face, and this is going to be our adjacent face. Doesn't make any sense, does it? Not really. Not really? Okay, so reference face, that's the face we're going to take all the measurements for all the joints on this timber out of. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, every measurement's going to come from this reference face. And they're also going to be able to come from the adjacent face because we know it's square, right? Mm -hmm. We don't want to pull them off of here because that's out of square by like a sixteenth of an inch. That's not a lot, but for me, I want it. I want it as best as we can get it so when I go to put it up there it fits. Understandable? Mm -hmm. So we know that this is the face that we want to take all our measurements from. What are we going to do to make sure that this is indeed the face that we're going to be using? What do we want to do to make sure that we use this this side the way we're supposed to? We mark it. How do you mark it? Okay. Mm. We're going to draw a big triangle. Okay, this side on the reference face, we're going to darken it in. And that way I know that that's my reference face. Some people, everybody does a little different. This is how I do it. Someday you might find your own way. And then we're going to go right in front of this and we're going to put another triangle. But we're not going to darken it in. That way I know that's the adjacent face. I know this is the side we're taking the measurements from. So, why don't you put like three or four more of those, those right down through this timber, okay? 
so I might be, I gotta take off my glove for that. Okay. So, we got this marked out where we want it, right? Mm-hmm. What about that? What's that? What about this? What about this? Yeah. Well, what do we got to do now? Level it. Level it? Yeah, cut it out. You mean square it off? Yeah. That's, that's what you call a good, an end that's nice and straight and everything's right? Yeah. It's squared up. So, how should we go about doing that? Well, what do I have in my hand? A square. A square. So, before we do this, let's look this timber over. Do we have any spots on here that looks like we want to cut them out? Well, besides that, goofball. Look it over. What are you looking for? Any idea? What's the site called? Reference. What's the site? Good job. Do you see any bad spots that look like they're going to be a pain in the ass to deal with? Not really. Not really? Are you sure? Sure. Did you look at that end close enough? That's called? It's called Wayne, Timber Wayne. We've got some down here too. You see that? That's where you couldn't square the sides up because the bark was too close. But, so we know we've got a long patch of Wayne down there. Looks like it's going to be a pain in the ass, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. So when we square this up, we want to come back here as close to this end as we can. Which side are we going to square all this up from, though? side would make reference, re reference base? Yeah. Good job. You been watching the videos? Uh, what do you mean, no? Uh, you little Benedict Arnold, you're supposed to watch the videos. I didn't know that. Some loyalty. Some loyalty, child. I'll tell you what. Subscriber. I'll get right off of that. Oh, yeah? You're lucky. I'm lucky. Yeah, you're lucky. Lucky? Yeah, you're lucky. Description doesn't mean much if you don't watch the videos, you goober. Way to be, kid. And to think we fed you tonight. My mom fed me. She made the dinner. Oh, yeah? Yeah, she made the dinner. Well, I cleaned the deer. That's true. Okay, pay attention. So we got to square this part off, but I want it as close to this end as I can so we can try to maybe cut some of that bad stuff off on the other end. We're not going to be able to cut a lot because... The weight. Yeah. Okay, we have one line. Now what? Another line? Where? Down there. No, I'm not worried about that end at all right now. Here. Here. Well, what side are we going to use to square it? Our fruit. Show me how you do it. You can leave your gloves on though. Just set it on there, show me how you do it. Well, you got to try it though. So is that going to give you, holding it like that, is that going to give you a good square line all the way down there? It's okay. It's okay to be wrong, buddy. This is how you learn, okay? I know. So do, yeah. you, do you think that this little corner right here is enough to hold that on to keep this thing perfectly square? No. No. Do you have any other ideas? 
I think you're getting really close. Let's try. Oh, you're getting really close. Let's try it like this. Okay. So you got a longer part of the square sitting on here. So if you have a little knot divot like we have right there, you can kind of skip over it, right? Okay. So you square it. What we're going to do. Okay. This side. Why don't you show me how that square is going to go on there? Drawing the line so your hands aren't freezing, okay? Mm -hmm. That's cold, fine by me. How cold metal gets. You don't need to do the bottom though, do we? No, we can do so. That's another good point. Good question. We kind of want to mark out everything we can from this side before we roll this thing over. Do you know why? Any ideas? Yeah, you're exactly right. Why waste energy you don't have to waste, you know? That wind is nasty, man. Yeah. All right, so what are we going to do now? Any ideas? I'm not going to do this stuff. Well, yeah, I know. I'm not expecting you to know it all. I just kind of want you to think about it. You like doing this stuff? Yeah, I do. Okay. But this is this is where you learn. You're at a good age to start learning because another five, six years of monkeying around with stuff like this would be really good at it, right? Yeah. You're at a really good age to learn because you haven't discovered girls yet. Yeah. I still have you. Yeah. Huh? I still have you. You haven't discovered females yet. What are you giggling for? Okay. So we have some stuff to figure out here. Emma's been out here quite a bit with me. Of course Emma does. <laughs> She's the good kid tonight. She's the good kid every night. Well, there is that. Why do we put like a V mark there instead of just a line? <laughs> so I don't lose it? No, well, besides that. I don't know nothing about this really. Well, you're here to learn. I want you to think about it. I want you to sit and consider and use your mind. You know that. Well, let me see. Do you have one? I check this a lot. No, I see daylight, all right. There it is. Oh, I see work light. Holy cow, that's a good view in there. That's a lot of space to fill, pal. Okay. All right, blocking the light, goofball. I thought you said you could see right through. Well, it's only a little shaft of light coming out of your ear, and you're wearing hats. You're covering it up. Okay, so we have two marks here, right? Now what? You're not sure because you don't know what the measurements are yet, right? No. Sir. Okay. So this is a two inch wide tenon. This is 10 inches. So because we're measuring from this face, we're not going to measure anything from this way, right? We're not going to measure off that corner. We're going to measure off of this one. So from here, so we make that V right there, so I have a really good point to line this up on. You can see what I'm saying? Oh, yeah. Because if you draw the line just straight across, sometimes you might get that line. It's not going to be 
the time you get to one end of it, you may have kicked off a little bit. <coughs> but if you put that V in there on anything you're measuring, you'll be able to go right to that point. So you make a point with that V and then you know that's where your measurement's supposed to be. So this is two inches wide. I'm going to go right to that point. You want to make sure you're holding your square good on there. I'm going to come into the four inch mark. And draw a line. I'm going to go to the six inch mark. I'm going to draw a line across there. So we're marking out this tenon. You know what a tenon is, right? It's up there. Little skinny piece there. Yeah. It comes off with a bigger piece. Yeah. Okay. And we'll do the same thing here. Trick. <clears throat> How wide do you think this is? So, two inches. What makes you think that? About an inch right there. So, there. How are you going to know for sure? You use a tape measure. It's two inches, right? Yeah. yeah. So, these squares are called framing squares for a reason. These are the squares that they started using when you when they started doing square rule timber frames. I mean, they've always they always had squares to draw right angle lines, but at some point in timber framing history or carpentry history, they actually made these a standard size because you could go all over the place and have totally different sizes all the time. Like you look at the Japanese squares, they're a different size. You look at some of the old colonial squares. This part would be different, this part would be different, but nowadays when you buy them, unless you're buying like the Japanese square, stuff like that, but over here in the States, most of the time you get a two inch body, you an inch and a half ton, all right? So what you can do, because you know that's two inches, take that right to our lines, and hold it tight. have to line that side up. I can just use this to trace it. See how that comes out perfect? Mm -hmm. Now, how are we going to know what we have to cut off of here? Because right now we just got a bunch of lines, right? We know something's going to get cut. Do you know which part's going to get cut? Those parts. Yeah. So what should we do to make sure that I don't screw this up when I go to cut them? Mark it. I'm just going to put an X through it, okay? You don't have to go crazy with them. Some people do, but I don't like a ton of lines on what I'm working on because it just confuses things. Do you know what they call doing this? Um, not really. It's called marking out your waste. So. I know that this part right here is going to end up being five inches thick, the scarf joint, right? So what we're going to do is come back to here, right? I'm just going to carry these marks right here, because I'm not cutting across here, so I don't want to put a line there, right? Carry this down. Alright. 
So, as we know, this what face is this on the timber? Reference. Which one's this? Okay, so. Why is it important? Because we're taking the screws off this. That's right. That's right. So we're gonna, we're gonna take this line and we'll go to we'll do this right hand. Go to my five inch mark here. Very important you get these lines right where they have to go because if you don't, the joint's not going to line up on you. It'll be out of square. Okay, so we have our line there. I think that level's coming inside tonight. Yeah. So we're what's uh so what's getting cut and what's not here? Um. That's You're right. And why are we making marks on this stuff that's getting cut out? So we don't screw up. We don't screw up. What could we possibly screw up? Cutting off the wrong stuff. Cutting off the wrong stuff. Well, you're you're getting a treat tonight because you know how I learned. Huh the hard way. Do you know what that means? You screwed up. I screwed up. Yeah. So, there it is. Anything else you want to know? No. Okay. You want me to show you a couple other things? Sure. Okay. So, you got two different types of wood inside a timber, inside a log. You know what they are? It's called the heartwood and the sapwood. What do you think would be the sapwood? The outside. The outside, very good. And why do they call it the sapwood? Because it's the outside. It's the outside, but the sapwood carries the sap in the tree. Right? Okay, and the heartwood is right in the middle. The heartwood on this is right in the middle. Why do we mill these up with that heartwood right in the middle, do you know? No. Okay, this is very important. It's really simple, but it's very important on any kind of big timber when you're when you're building something like this. So this thing as it dries out, it's going to crack. Yeah. And those cracks we call them checks. Don't ask me why they call them checks, they just call them checks. So what's going to happen is this thing could crack right here and it could go all the way through. The only thing that's going to stop that from going all the way through, it's going to hit this heartwood in the middle. And it won't go through to the other side. If that were to check and go all the way through the timber, what's yeah. that going to do to the timber? It's going to ruin it. Yeah, it's going to make it so it's weak, right? If the timber can't do its job, it's not going to be able to hold anything up. So when we mill this stuff, that's why we get that in the middle. It's called boxing the heartwood. It's very important. All right. Uh -huh. And also, your heartwood, you don't tend to get the bugs go after the heartwood much because there's not a lot in there for them to eat. The sapwood, you can kind of see a little bit of an edge of it there. See, it's that lighter colored wood there. Bugs like to eat that stuff. They got a lot of food and nutrients in there for them. Unfortunately, we can't get logs big enough, so we don't have any sapwood. So we've got to make do and cut that heartwood right in the middle. So, do you like doing that? Yeah. Are you frozen? Not really. Not really? I'm just tired. Tired? They're really tired right now. Yeah, okay. I'll tell you what. You want to go in? Oh, are you going to go in? Shortly. Take can wait until you go in. Okay. Well, he got reference face and adjacent face down pretty good tonight, and he got X and out the way so we don't cut over it.
it's fun teaching your kids if they're in the mindset to do it. If they're not in the mindset, if it's got to be a fight and it can't be enjoyable for them, there's no point in even doing it. So these little things, you know, as soon as I start to notice, it's pretty cold out here tonight. It's in the teens and we got a really stiff wind coming. Fortunately, we have enough of this wall on here to where we can work out here, but I'm sure you've been hearing the tarps flapping in the background. I cannot wait to get those off of here and have the rest of the siding on. But anyway, uh, so we got them out here, taught them a little bit about layout, a little bit about picking a square side, a reference face, an adjacent face. And as I've said in many, many, many videos, I don't, I can't, I wish I had a dollar for every time I said reference face, adjacent face on this channel. But it is very important tenants of square rule timber framing, probably the most important. So that's why we spend so much time covering that. Uh, my goal here on this channel, if I'm doing a project and I'm trying to show somebody how to do it, I, I'm not just doing this project on YouTube just to say, hey, look what I did. I mean, yeah, that's part of it, a little bit of ego trip going on there, but a lot of it is to say you can do this too if you want to build this thing something like this you can do it you don't need to spend thousands of dollars to hire somebody to do it if you have any kind of carpentry skills or anything like that you can do it it may take you a while i mean we've been going a long time on this thing we're getting close but we've been going a long time so i try to show enough that if you're interested in doing this you'll have the basic information to start out with so that you can maybe expand upon that information now i spend a lot of time and i keep the information fairly generic there's nothing real crazy fancy here as far as timber frames go because i'm not going to show you things that i do not yet know myself that would be an ass thing to do and uh i'm not into doing that but i could show you the basics i can show you enough to get you going to maybe build your own now i do have a more complicated structure plan that's going to be a lot of fun because i will actually bring you along for the planning phases the design phases we will actually do drawings because i will have to for a building permit but we're going to be taking a 28 by 32 addition off the front of the house and it's kind of one of those things where i want to make it kind of uh I've learned a lot since I built this house 10, 11 years ago. I stick built this house and I was pretty green, you know, and uh, so I've learned a lot. I'd like to take everything I've learned over the last 10, 15 years and put it into this addition. We're actually uh, moving our kitchen, living room, and dining room and getting ourselves an extra bedroom because, uh, well, I'm running out of places to sleep. I blame my wife for it, but I guess it's partially my fault, I'm told. I guess, uh, apparently, I, I guess it's partly my fault. So anyway, enough of that. We don't want to get it dirty here, but, uh, anyway, we had fun tonight doing this. It's a low-key night. It's really too nasty out to be breaking tools out and really freezing your fingers off, but it's a perfect night just to start laying this out. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed it. Uh... Plenty more to come. If you liked it, like, subscribe, whatever you feel like doing. We'll do the YouTube plugs on there. Sharing the videos really helps the channel, really helps the... It helps a lot sharing the videos. So if you feel like doing that on Facebook or whatever, feel free to. It is appreciated. So anyway, you guys have a good night, and I'll see you on the next one.